tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed, and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to... Raw. Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny, Johnny Water. Bow, bow, bow. Hey, hey, guys! Very excited show. We get into the Biggie Tupac murders. We break down the LAPD's role in it. It's a great episode, guys. So we're not going to spend a lot of time talking right now, but uh, that's so crazy. So let's get into real quick. Uh, gotta see me live, samtribly.com. I got, I got LA. Uh, I got Comedy Chaos, Christmas Chaos, the 12th, next, this Tuesday coming up. El Monte, come and get it, man. Woo-hoo. Come and get it, El Monte. Myself, Xavier Grail, who knows who else will show up. And then January looks like fire already. Cleveland, Pottstown, Pittsburgh, and then finally, Batavia. Uh, all in January, putting together some February stuff, looking again. Like, I might be shooting my special either uh, first week of February or last. I will let you know by the end of the month. Bang, bang, pow. Uh, again, comedy, Chaos Twins are fire. Anything else? Anything else, guys? Check out. Uh, we got new hats. We had a good time. Yeah, we, oh, new we got new hats. Beating. We got T-shirts. We got T-shirts. We got Christmas shirts. We got T-shirts for you. We got hats. Uh, we got Yahweh of the Highway. We got Swarm Hats. And we got beanies and hats. Where's the list? Christmas chaos, Christmas uh, sweatshirts, all that stuff at samtribly.com or timfallhattshirts.com. Anything else, guys? Nope. Oh. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's get into a nice little change of pace here. I'm very excited to be talking about this subject. This, uh, please welcome our guest. He has a podcast called the Dossier Podcast. Please welcome Don S- Sikorsky. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. How are you doing? We're uh, blessed to have you on. I'm very excited to talk about this subject. For our listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Sure. So um, I'm a television producer and investigative journalist. You can find all of my work and more information on the dossier at criminalmindedmedia.com. You know, most of my work or most of my career has been spent at the intersection of what I like to call simply cops and robbers, you know, police stories, stories of uh, hip hop and police corruption and, you know, just true crime. So this story is a story I've been investigating for close to 12 years now. Uh, I I think uh, true crime is pretty amazing. What drew you to this? Why, why, why this subject matter? Well, it's interesting. Um, You know, I did my first documentary film and and I was in New York City in the early 2000s and there was a rumor going around New York City that there was a secret unit that the NYPD had put together called the Hip Hop Police. And when I heard that story, I said, wow, that, that sounds interesting to me, right? Why would a police unit inside of the NYPD want to go after hip hop's biggest stars? And secondarily to that, I filed a FOIA request and I was able to get this massive book that was a surveillance book that the FBI, the NYPD, the Miami PD, the LAPD had put together on everyone in hip hop, J50, wow. whatever. And that that first documentary film was the story of the hip hop police, why they were put together. And obviously out of that, you want to start to go into this idea 
If there are law enforcement entities who have a microscope inside hip hop music, then why are the murders of their two biggest stars remain unsolved? And and that really was the jumping off point of my career. But more importantly, it was sort of, for lack of a better word, a journey of trying to understand why the LAPD cannot solve you know, this homicide of, of arguably hip hop's biggest star. Yeah. I mean, when you listen to uh biggie small still today, it's like when you realize he's like 23 years old, when he's doing that, it is like insanity, like, like nothing we've ever seen before and since. And so I want to start kind of uh, at the beginning of this. Cause you know, I'm at an age right now. I'm 51. And so I I was blessed to see this kind of growth from the late 80s into the early 90s of what I would say from rap to hip hop. And I think those are two different things. And so I want to get into your thoughts on some of the and, and then we'll get into this, the 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 murder case, but your thoughts, have you done any investigation into the intelligence agency's invisible hand in the emergence of gangster rap and the pushing of that uh, uh, into the mainstream while, you know, all these kind of like, you know, whether it's um, Run DMC, um, uh, De La Soul, all these kind of more positive, uh, public enemy, uh, this more positive, uplifting hip hop gets uh, rap gets kind of pushed aside, and this new form of like what they call gangster rap suddenly is everywhere all, all, all of a sudden. Yeah, I think what I've seen, and and when I did my documentary film on the sort of hip hop police you could see a correlation of investigations and intelligence that was being put forth by United States Attorney's Office, by the FBI, by the DEA. Um, and, you know, it, it makes you wonder. The one sort of, let's call it because we're I'm on your podcast, right? Yeah. The, the, the thing that, you know... I've heard and and many people have touched on this a little bit is that there was a certain point within the you know hip hop music business where there was this letter that was written right yes. and yes. and it, and it, and it was this sort of blueprint of how like the the hip hop music could sort of sow discontent and confusion and 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 all that stuff I've never sort of been able to, you know, look into that maybe in the way that I would like to. But I definitely know for a fact that federal law enforcement in our country has had a microscope inside looking at hip hop music and culture, you know, all the way back to arguably the early 90s um, until today. You know, if you look at what's going on down in Atlanta right now with mm -hmm. the Rico case of a of a hip hop superstar, you know, the New York Times, the Daily, you know, I was just listening to an episode this morning about them talking about the idea is hip hop on trial. So there's always been this sort of, you know, clash of hip hop music and law enforcement, specifically federal or at the state level. Um, and you could almost write an anthology about it, you know? Um, so it's something that I've been fascinated with. And I think it's something that not a lot of people have ventured to, you know, write about it or do um, films about it because it does involve sort of, you know, the intersection of the drug world with hip hop, the intersection of a lot of the drug kingpins of the eighties inside hip hop. So there's a lot going on there. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. Cause if you take a look at like the Laurel Canyon movement of the sixties and the seventies, you know, the, uh, the, the, the intelligence agencies, the spooks were all over that uh, to the point where like you start to study the kids, the people who blew up and like all their connections to 
to uh, the military is kind of crazy. So a as a 51 year old, I talk about this uh, on the internet and I, I get people like th these really young people call me boomer, you know, you're, you're, you're freaking boomer. You're, I'm like, you mean the guy who lived through that John watched the emergence of gangster rap, listened to it on the radio, indulge, bought, albums of it like you're you're listening on spotify as like the history i live that stuff not that i was in the gangbang culture but i was listening to this music coming out like nwa and just like how much that was i remember people requesting nwa on the radio and i, I remember being very young and being like that's crazy that they're playing that song on the radio you know it's like it's so like graphic and and it just starts going like, what is the hidden hand in this to allow this to kind of take, take root? And then you watch, and then we'll get into the murders, but then you watch like kind of old school rappers talk about how like the clubs changed. They went from these kind of fun, you know, empowered thing to now everyone's got a gun. Nobody's fist fighting anybody anymore. Everybody's shooting at each other. And it's like this rollout into this. Now, the, you know, people be like, well, what are you saying? They're not talented. No, of course they're talented. They're very talented. These guys were, I mean, like DMX, Biggie Small. I mean, you can watch Biggie Smalls at 16 years old on the corner, just spitting. And it's like, Man, that guy, you knew he was going to blow up. So it, it's very interesting because we see that a lot where you like these intelligence agencies will create these kind of controlled oppositions and then also use them to kind of like, you know, it's like problem, reaction, solution, where, you know, you create the the the, the situation, you have the reaction to it, and then the, then the solution to it is to, ah, oh, look, we're arresting everybody. So. It is interesting to me the true history of hip hop and how what where's the invisible hand? Who are the people that were pushing the records? You you see a lot of these old school uh you know record execs going on like these morning shows these these uh, urban morning shows and they're getting grilled on like why did you push all these stuff? Why why were these the people that were being pushed? And you're like, well, would they would sell records, but. You know, if, if all the if, if the only thing that's selling records is oranges, but that's also the only thing you're throwing up against the wall, it's kind of like to see what sticks is kind of interesting. So let's get into the actual day of the the murder, and then we'll get into what you believe happened. So so I think we'll fast forward to we'll revert we'll go back in time a little bit. Tupac. You know, I'm in L I'm Vegas at that time. I'm going to college. I know exactly. Yeah, you were. You, you're, you're right. You were in Vegas during that time. Do you, do you were exactly Oh, right. I remember, remember the whole thing. I remember the club that he was going to because that club has, has been cursed before this and after this. It has always tried to be a thing, and it could never pop off. And just this one moment, it kind of had something going. And so Tupac, they beat the crap out of this guy in the elevator there becomes like, we're going to pop them off. We're going to take them out. And the rest is history. Do you have any thoughts on the Tupac murder? Well, I will speak to that. I haven't investigated that as much as I've investigated the Biggie thing. I think when you look at the Tupac murder and the news recently of who was arrested, I do not believe that he seemingly had anything to do with it. Um, I think he's a he's a convenient way for the Las Vegas Police Department who wanted to do absolutely nothing with this crime or case for, you know, many, many years has, you know, probably gotten tired and said, well, this guy's gone on a number of platforms and basically admitted to being conspiracy, yeah. you know, part of a conspiracy to murder. Yeah. Let's just let's arrest this idiot and and be done with this right um i think it's a little bit more complicated and complex and i will say this you know suge knight has stated over and over publicly that you know he's not going to tell the police who shot at him and who killed tupac but he has said publicly it wasn't orlando anderson and it wasn't Dwayne keefe you know keefe d davis so so let's start there of someone who was actually there. And then if you look at the evidence that the Las Vegas Police Department has put forth, 
it's basically a joke, you know? Um, and so, you know, once again, it's a convenient way for the Vegas PD to kind of clean up their image where they've been inept on this, you know, since the start, pretty much. So, and you know, so you've done a lot of crime podcasts. What we're, what we're looking at, and we'll get into this with Rampart, yeah. is, you know, g more gangs within the police department. And we're, we're kind of coming out of this time where it's like, defund the police. My cousin's a cop. You know, the demoralization that they're going through. And it's like this fine line between like corrupt cops and defund the police. It's like, you know, everyone, you know, we get libertarians on the show all the time and they're just like, we, well, we could do it ourselves. I'm like, you have people going on giant crime sprees right now. Nobody's doing anything. No. And I'm, I'm just saying that's going to get me a that's little the blowback. point though. I think that's the point. The government's running it right now and they're giant crime sprees. Well, listen, yeah. I, you know, funny enough, you say that right now I'm doing a police documentary. I've been inside of 10 different police departments in the last 12 weeks. And I, I've been in the back of cars, in the front of cars going out on calls. I would encourage anyone who says defund the police or, you know, stop funding them to get in a police car on a Friday and a Saturday night and deal with you know, issues of mental health, deal with people with, you know, weapons and, and, and deal with what they have to deal with. Listen, I think policing needs to change in many respects. And what I've seen out on the street now, riding with these young cops is two things. I've seen young cops who know nothing but being recorded the, the minute they step into the police car. They have a camera on their body. They have a camera facing out. They have a camera that is shooting them inside of the car. And then everywhere they go, there's pole cams, surveillance cams, ring cams. These young cops know nothing but being recorded on the street. And what I've seen inside police departments in the last 12 weeks is actual change. I've seen change up front and up, you know, and up close. And I would encourage some of these people that talk about these issues to get out from the keyboards and, 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 and YouTube and go out and, and actually ride with a police officer. You can go into your local police department and sign up for a ride along. They allow that you sign your life away if you get shot and killed, but that's, that's another story, <laughs> but you can fucking do that as a citizen in any city. And so, you know, I love a lot of these journalists who talk about this stuff, yet has never sat in a cop car for an hour, you know? Um, and so I think when, when we talk about these issues um, and talk about true crime and crime, you know, they're a lot more nuanced than, than people make them out to be, um, you know, some two, three years post George Floyd. It's a little bit more complex and complicated. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I've been on a ride along a few times when I was uh worked in print media and uh yeah, it's a, it's a tough job for sure. And I think I just to defend the libertarians for a second, the libertarian idea is not I mean, we didn't come up with defund the police as libertarians. Libertarians want to replace the police with something. It's just not, you know, what this is. We think that there's sure. a better system out there. Uh I, I just want to set us apart from defund. No, the okay, I respect that. Cuz defund well, the police, they don't have an idea. Yeah. They just their idea is defund the police, yeah. which is I mean, that's insanity is to yeah. just because it's, it's that, funny. that makes I no saw, sense. I, you know, in I was in a I won't say the city or the department that I went out on and I was doing a ride along and there was a young psychology student because I guess some of this is some of the solutions on, on in some people's minds is. Well, let's put mental health professionals yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I tell you what, I saw the look in this young psychology student's eyes after a few <laughs> calls, and he looked terrified and looked like he wanted to run as quickly as he could to, to, to get out of that situation. Yeah. But we'll say like some of these departments are now doing, let's call it, you know, um, solutions around mental health, you know, solutions around this shit that everyone's talking about. 
but it, I, I don't, I'm not sure it's being covered in the right way, but you know, listen, it's a, it's a, it's a debate to be had. And I, I continue to encourage people to see, you know, keep their eyes open around this shit. You know? Okay. Well, what would we say about like uh traffic stops? You think cops should be around for a traffic stop going with that gun and everything? Um, they're changing that too. Um, around that, you know, they, they are changing some of the policies and procedures around that. And listen, that's when you start to really get into the nuance of policing. What was the probable cause for them to pull someone over? Right. I think what, what you see in those circumstances is a lot of times petty things are leading to some of those interactions, a broken taillight, you know, uh, tinted windows, what have you, bullshit, in, in, for lack of a better word, leads to some of those encounters. And and listen, you know, police departments across the U.S., they've had their, their issues with, you know, some of these specialized units, some of these gang units, the Scorpion unit in the Memphis PD, you know, the Gun Trace Task Force down in Baltimore. These are units that were robbing drug dealers, selling drugs, right? That mm -hmm. needs to be cleaned up before yes. they can sort of, you know, start talking about some of this other stuff. But, you know, it's a work in progress. And I think it's very easy in 2023, 24 to be hard on cops. But let's just have a little bit more nuanced conversation about it and be honest and transparent about it, I think, is where we need to go as a country. I agree. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends at Fume. I want to tell you about their innovative award nominated device. Let me tell you about Fume. Cold turkey may be great on a sandwich, okay, but there are better ways to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor or some crazy spiritual mumbo jumbo from hot chicks on TikTok, okay? We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they they look at the problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Okay, Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is na completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and making replacing your bad habit easy. Your Fume comes in an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for your fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while you're breaking your habit, okay? I love it. I love it. it's well-weighted, perfectly balanced, extremely fun to fidget with. It's made of real wood, and the shapes are insane. It feels cool using it. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard. But switching the fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of successful stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating hu humanity's breakup with destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Try fume.com. And use code TINFOIL to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today, okay? Try fumefum.com and use the code TINFOIL for additional 10% off your, your journey pack today. Enjoy! So you, you know, you've been working on two projects concurrently, Who Shot Biggie, Tupac. Uh, who shot Biggie and Tupac for Fox Entertainment? You done a, the motion picture City of Lies. Uh, gave you great access and hidden documents into the murder and understanding of like how how cops work and all that stuff. Uh, let's get into that. Like you you talk about legendary uh, former LAPD Lieutenant Sergio Roberto Roberto. The Wall family lead investigator into the wrongful death lawsuit against LAPD in the city of Los Angeles was a chief source. Can we get into the, uh, like kind of like what you learned from him and your sure. thoughts on that whole thing? Yeah, it, it's very simple. I got to be honest. When I started to do the dossier podcast, 
I thought the stories of Biggie and Tupac had been done to death. And I said, you know what? I, I don't know if there's any story left. And what happened was, is I had all these documents and I'm reading these documents. And in these documents, there's a name that comes up that I saw two times in about a thousand pages of documents. And it was of an FBI agent named Phil Carson. And I said to myself, you know, FBI agents normally don't fucking say anything. They won't talk to you about their investigation. But I had a private investigator get his phone number and I called him and he was still on the job inside the FBI. And he basically said, your timing is perfect. I want to speak to you and I, I want to tell you a story you're not going to believe. And what that story simply is is when he was at the FBI, he went to his bosses at the FBI and he said, I want to investigate the murder of Biggie because I understand the Rampart police scandal, which he was the main police investigator, FBI investigator. And there's another scandal that he invested called the Ruben Palomares case. He says, "This, these are the usual suspects of what I've been doing my whole career. Phil Carson, as an FBI agent, went out. Not only did he solve the murder of Biggie, in, and it's on paper, he went to his bosses, he went to the U.S. attorney, his bosses at the FBI said, this is a case that the U.S. attorney can prosecute, bring it to the U.S. attorney, and that is when Phil Carson was completely shot down. So I just want to say that again. Phil Carson investigated the murder of Biggie with the tools of the FBI, wiretaps, bank information, 20 confidential informants and confidential sources, and solved the murder and showed how the LAPD was involved in that the LA, LAPD had been covering it up weeks after Biggie was killed. They, know, they knew who was involved, and that's when the cover-up started. So to me, I said, this is a story in the Biggie and Tupac universe that has not been told. Here's an FBI agent, okay? And he's telling this story first person. And secondarily to that, I didn't just believe him, right? Because in this day and age, who knows? Sometimes law enforcement officials are disgruntled, et cetera. So this is when Sergio Robledo comes into the picture. And Sergio Robledo was hired by Miss Wallace, by Biggie's mom, during the civil trial. When Biggie's mom sued the Los Angeles Police Department, Sergio was the main investigator. Sergio Robledo comes out of the LAPD homicide, South Bureau homicide, one of the most respected investigators in LAPD history. And guess what? Sergio has a treasure trove of investigative files. Lastly, I was able, and I can't tell you where I got these, but I did. I got the unredacted FBI files of Phil Carson's investigation into the murder of Biggie. That proves in black and white, not in conjecture, innuendo, or rumor, who killed Biggie, why the LAPD needed to cover it up, in the names of the LAPD officials that were a part of the cover-up. And this is all within internal FBI and LAPD documents. So the Dossier podcast explains in 20 episodes Phil Carson's story, the story of how he got there, and the story of who killed Biggie, who the trigger man was, and why the LAPD needed to cover up the whole thing. Wow. So let's start. Uh, you've discovered who through all this investigation and these documents, where, where do you want to start with what happened and who did it and your final findings and all that stuff? Like, where do you want to start? Well, we'll start with this. It's obvious through the documents and Phil Carson's story that Two LAPD officers, one named David Mack and one named Rafael Perez, were a part of a conspiracy to kill Biggie along with a trigger man and known hitman 
named Amir Muhammad. Amir Muhammad and David Mack went to the University of Oregon to, together. Um, they were best friends. David Mack, um, when, when David Mack goes to jail, Amir Muhammad is his ver first visitor in jail. Okay. So here's what Phil wanted to do in his investigation. He wanted to make sure that David Mack, Rafael Perez, and Amir Muhammad were, let's call, for lack of a better word, a part of the conspiracy. And if you prove that they were a part of this conspiracy and took part in the murder and were at the actual murder scene, which they were, then what you have is the LAPD doing everything in their power to make sure that this information does not get out to the public. Now, why is that important? It's important because when Biggie mom, when Biggie's mom goes to sue the city of Los Angeles, if she can prove that David Mack and Rafael Perez were present and a part of that conspiracy, at that time, this is going back now 15 years, she would have won close to $500 million oh against my. the city of oh. Los Angeles. So as you know, and you, you guys are all smart, when you talk about money and when you talk about that type of money, that is the type of money that can bankrupt a city government. That's the type of money that could bankrupt a police department. And that's what Biggie was seemingly, they had an expert come on at the civil trial and map out for the judge and the jury how much Biggie's like career earnings would have been and that's what that number is based on okay and you know the interesting part in the bigger bigger sort of lie and cover-up was that the lapd inside of the lapd there has always been all of the evidence that they would have ever needed to prosecute and make a case of who killed Biggie and why they killed him and why they covered it up. Now, the other caveat to this that not too many people have that not too many people know and sort of Phil revealed during the podcast is Biggie was not the target of this conspiracy. The target of this conspiracy was Sean Combs. Puffy, Love, whatever whatever you whoever you whatever you want to call him. And the reason why Biggie ended up dead and Puffy lived was a very simple thing that happened the night of the murders is they were in two cars. In one car was Puffy and some people and a, a security man by the name of Eugene Deal. In the other car was Biggie and Little C's and some of his friends. They came upon the light right there at the intersection where Big was killed. Gene Deal told the driver with Puffy to run the red light. Biggie's team stopped at the red light and was killed. Biggie was not the target on that night. It was Sean Combs. It was Puffy Combs that was proven in documents and testimony by a number of different confidential informants and is in the FBI files and, and the other LAPD files that exist also. So I'm giving you like a top line summary of some of the high points of this investigation, of this cover up and, and of this story um, that I think is important for people to know. And again, it's not I'm not saying this. What I make clear in my podcast is I am telling you information that is in internal LAPD, FBI and civil court case documents. OK, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sitting here, you know, uh, with rumor and innuendo. I base this on real reporting. So, uh, just to go back to kind of uh, the the lawsuit and the five hundred million dollars and what's at stake here. I mean, this to me is the whole premise behind uh, making of a murder. Yeah, like 100%. you know, this guy is goes to jail for false. Uh, uh, 
uh, accusations of sexual assault. Turns out it was all completely contrived by the law enforcement. He's up for a $45 million lawsuit. So now they throw him into something else. And, and you just see that every level that they go with this court case, the, 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 the judges keep throwing it out because at this point, if Stephen Avery can actually sue, I mean, he may actually own the state of Wisconsin. They <laughs> they they might change the name to like uh, Stephen Avery Land uh, by the time he's done because there's there's so much money involved because it's so obvious what they're doing right here. In my humble opinion, so well, even well, even if they could like, let's say they did set him up, let's say it is a setup, it's still them trying to make sure he they don't get he doesn't get the money. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, if it looked like he was getting out, I wouldn't doubt if he got if they they touched him up before that. So, I, I see that happening right now. So, did you do any research into uh, Rampart and we, you know, and what this is this whole thing about? Like, this is the basically the bad uh, training day, the bad lieutenant. This stuff is like glor glorified in Hollywood. The the fine line between law and cop and criminal yes. and what these guys were getting into. Uh, like, can you go, do you have any research in the Rampart? I did. I did research Rampart extensively. And I also have the files of the FBI Rampart investigation. And what's interesting about Rampart and what I try to tell people in order to understand the Biggie murder you have to understand the Rampart police scandal inside of the LAPD. Now, here's the high notes of Rampart. Officer Rafael Perez, Officer David Mack, Officer Nino Durden, Officer Kevin Gaines. Um, these individuals were a part of the Rampart police scandal, okay? Rafael Perez and David Mack were planting guns on suspects. They were dealing drugs. They were stealing drugs. Um, they were beating people up during arrests, what have you. The other part of the story that is defies belief is David Mack, Rafael Perez, and most likely other LAPD officers robbed a Bank of America. What? Okay. And got away with an upwards of nine hundred thousand dollars that they never found. Okay, what? Yes, oh. yes. David Mack, as an LAPD officer, went into a Bank of America in downtown Los Angeles with a ski mask on. They say Perez was there. They say possibly Nito Durden was there. And David Mack had a girlfriend, Evelyn Romero, inside of the Bank of America who, who knew when the money drop was. What? And to this day, they have never recovered any of that money. Okay? Now, Phil Carson, as an FBI agent, is tasked with investigating all of the Rampart officers. Okay? Okay. And if you look at the his files and the files, there's a list of about 20 cops within Rampart that he identified were dirty cops. The LAPD's version of Rampart that they want the public to, to think is that Rafael Perez, possibly Mac, and maybe one other person were the only rogue officers that were doing any sort of, of this misconduct. Well, Phil Carson in his FBI investigation called bullshit on the whole thing. He went to his bosses, he went to the LAPD, and once again, they said, Phil, mind your business. This is a public story that we're gonna put all on Rafael Perez, and that's, that's gonna be enough for the public. They can buy one dirty cop, they can't buy 20. Right. In this story. Now, what is even crazier to think about everyone, you knew you said it Rampart Rampart. Everyone knows the name Rampart. Right. But what's even crazier about the Rampart scandal is on the list of the dirty officers inside of the LAPD. There was a name at the bottom of that list. And that name is a guy by the name of Ruben Palmaris. Okay. 
after the Rampart scandal breaks in the Los Angeles Times and the fucking papers and people are up in arms, Ruben Palomares is in bed with the Sinaloa drug cartel. And a woman who worked for the Sinaloa drug cartel and Ruben Palomares and a crew of other cops are running around South Los Angeles and tying up the biggest drug dealers in the neighborhoods and taking drugs, money, guns, and then reselling it back out on the fucking street. They had such a system that they would go into neighborhoods in tactical gear and they would go in, they would tie up, you know, one of the main fucking big time South Central, you know, drug kingpins. They would rob his stash houses and then they would go in business with the woman who worked for the Sinaloa drug cartel and redistribute those those drugs. Oh, my God. And that, and that story still to this day is kind of buried in the annals of LAPD history, which is crazy to fucking think about. It is. That is nuts. Yes. And and here's the thing. In talking with Phil, he had for for when he did the Palomares case, he had to go back and track the number of houses and the, the amount of money that these guys robbed from drug dealers over the course of like four or five years. Now, again, this is a Rampart cop. And he said at about 150 houses, <laughs> he had to stop counting because it just was too much information to give a fucking U.S. attorney. He said these guys probably made an upwards of five to eight million dollars in proceeds. And again, this is all documented in court documents, in, in confessions, in the Rampart files, right? So- this is the path of Biggie's story is it starts with Rampart with Mac and Perez and Phil Carson sees Mac and Perez and Rampart and knows they're dirty. He then sees the, the, the Palomares case and he sees how the LAPD again is able to manipulate and bury this in their own way. He's sitting at home. Phil Carson knows nothing about hip hop music. He knows Biggie from nothing. He's watching a VH1 special and says to himself, I know this fucking, this crew, I know this bullshit. I'm going to go investigate Biggie. So you had a man, an FBI agent, who saw t arguably 20 years of corruption inside of the LAPD. And unless you understand Rampart, unless you understand the story of Palomares, you can't understand the story and the cover up of the LAPD of Biggie, which is which is really crazy to think about, you know, and yet again, throughout the course of all of this, the LAPD sort of managed it in their own way. And unfortunately, and sadly enough, the the murder of Biggie is not solved for the reasons of Rampart, Palomares and 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 what this means collectively as a story for a department. I mean, absolutely insanity. And then you go, okay, have we ever seen this before? Let's say somebody is listening. The, the listeners of this crowd are very uh, open-minded and they've, you know, they've been on a really nice journey with us and they, they, you know, nothing surprises them, but let's just say somebody tunes in for the first time and they're like, no way that would never happen. I mean, this is the exact same story as the crack epidemic in, in South Central, where it was the CIA was like delivering all the crack. It is, again, it is a version of the Rick Ross. It's a it's a it's a it's a glorified, you know, version of LAPD officer goes in bed with the Sinaloa drug cartel and is flooding drugs into South Central Los Angeles with a badge. You know, and if you if you try to go and look for some of the articles on Palomares, they're out there. But 
not not in a way that you would be like, oh, when I said his name, have you ever heard of Ruben Palomares? Never. Never. You've heard of Rampart. You've heard of Biggie, right? But you've never heard of Ruben Palomares, which is fascinating to me, you know? And the last piece I'll tell you, which is even more fucking crazy, is while Ruben Palomares was running around with other cops, they killed an individual named Eric Mendoza. And when they were finally caught by the FBI in this whole scheme, the 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 U.S. attorneys decided that they didn't want to cloud the prosecution of the drugs with the murder of this 20 year old kid. And they let they let them slide on a fucking homicide and a murder where if you go and look today, the murder of Eric Mendoza by an LAPD officer is still unsolved. You know, but you are right in bringing that up. I mean, the the history of this historically um, and Rick Ross and the CIA and all of that stuff, you know, it, 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 it it's a head scratcher that this was allowed to happen at the level that it did inside of the Los Angeles Police Department. Hey, guys, let me tell you about our friends at Blue Chew, an American company for American boners, for American men. And, and people who like American men with American boners. Let me tell you about Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost, okay? You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or whenever an opportunity arises because when she says it's go time, you better go and take no time, Okay. You can take them anytime, anywhere. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So there's no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA, USA, and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package bang or with a marching van fireworks bald eagles who are rock hard flying around singing the praises that someone's about to go to pound town everyone's loving pound town yeah let's go so here's what we need you to do blue chew wants to help you have an have better sex discover your options at bluechew.com chew it and do it and we got special we got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code TINFOIL at checkout. Just pay five dollars. That's bluechew.com promo code TINFOIL to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Blue Chew! Enjoy! So, so you you state that the the target was Sean Puffy Combs. Obviously, Combs is in the in the 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 news for almost everything that he has done in the past, whether uh, it is sexual harassment, sexual assault, down low thugs, uh, and also the killing of Tupac. What is in your research, and I don't know if you look, I, I'm assuming you did, but what was the reason that he was the target of of that ambush that day? Well, it's very it's very simple in a sense that, you know, him and 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 Mary and Suge Knight had a blood feud. Um and and that feud, you know, really started when you know, Sean Combs's bodyguard killed Suge's best friend in Atlanta. Um, Suge's friend was Jake Robles. They were at a party in Atlanta. Um, Combs had a had a security guy that was his security guy for most of his early career, a guy by the name of Anthony Wolf Jones. And in the parking lot after a party that Suge and Puff were at, um, Jake Robles was killed by Anthony Wolf Jones. And, and I don't think that that was ever forgotten amongst all of the other stuff that was going on at that time. Right. But, you know, 
you you had two guys that you know were were very successful, very rich, were on the top of the 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 music you know ladder, and they they had an ongoing blood feud, and and you know the killing of someone's best friend, um, and what was around that time of death row, and who was around Suge at that time, which don't forget. David Mack, Raphael Perez, Kevin Gaines, they all worked for Death Row Records while they worked at the LAPD. There's an incredible uh, NPR um, documentary that was done on Rampart. And there is an interview that very not too many people have seen by the LAPD chief at that time, Bernard Parks, going on the record to NPR that LAPD officers were working for Suge Knight at Death Row Records and specifically David Mack and Raphael Perez. So oh th th this is the connections that are facts. They're not conjecture, rumor. It's documented. Um, and I mean, I'm just giving you the top line of, of, of this stuff, but there's there's been many investigators, whether it be Sergio Robledo, whether it be Phil Carson at the FBI, whether it be the character that Johnny Depp plays in City of Lies, which is Russell Poole, who was the original LAPD robbery homicide investigator who investigated the murder of Biggie. Three, three people who had all had decorated careers looked into this murder and put the pieces of it together in a coherent way um and so you know to think about it it's it you know you can look back on it now but while this was going on it defied belief you know um it, it really did it shocked everybody it was absolutely crazy and i mean you know, I, I, again, I'm 51. Like my view of the world is so much different than I was a kid. I, you know, I looked at everything like that. It was like Transformers, Autobots versus Decepticons, <laughs> good guys, bad guys. Now yeah. I'm realizing when it comes to money, there's probably no good guys. It's just everybody taking cash and and doing dark deeds for money, and it's just nuts to me. So where? Wait, is wait, 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 I was going to say something. Uh. I still nice. think it's still getting crazier. I still think it's evolving. Uh, drill music. Have you heard drill music? They're literally yeah, making spent, songs. Yeah. And they literally, I mean, it's way past fuck the police. It's way past yeah. that now. And now they're using it in court and stuff. Yeah, oh, they're did, admitting. Uh, yeah. I did a documentary and I spent a year in Chicago um, with the police and with the, the, in the South side of those communities and saw, you know, the effects of drill music inside of Chicago and now inside, I mean, drill music has become the new version of hip hop across the world. And to say that it isn't a violent, a, like a hyper violent form of music, you know, it's, 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 it's plain as day. I mean, the trends, what you see is the trends inside Chicago, whether it be, you know, the semi-automatic weaponry, the switches on guns that allows you to pull off 20 rounds in a second. The kids listen to that music that came in out of Chicago that was created out of the south side of Chicago and imitate that in Florida now, which is just it's just, oh, yeah. it's, just it's crazy to think about. Um you know, and you're, and you're to your point, you're seeing the evolution of it, I think, between crime, music, and there's been a ton of cases already around it, you know? Yeah, I mean, this is just, I mean, getting back into the CIA, the FBI, intelligence agencies, you know, this is what happens. You promote a certain type of lifestyle and people are easily impression impressionable will start to copy. I mean, we see this with like OnlyFans right now where it's like you have these articles constantly being written about all this money that OnlyFans are making. But in reality, if you make $500 a month, you are top 1%. Yeah. Think about that. How absolutely insane that is that they're trying to get you to basically 
burn down your entire life to be an OnlyFans star when in reality you're probably not going to make that much money at all. No, 1% of 1% is the stuff you read about. And the manipulation that goes on to get into that 1% is pretty staggering. And it's, it's crazy. Now, like, where what are you working on right now? Because I just, you know, getting into this drill music, it just seems like we're, we're in a real place right now. Uh, you know, there's three white guys and a Latino on here. So it's like kind of, well, I'm Armenian. I consider myself white. But, you know, we have a discussion about black culture. And what is black culture? And, you know, people on this show, nobody's going to get mad, but there could be people like, oh, you can't comment on that. You can't say any of that stuff. But I think like black culture is American culture. It is part of our, uh, the whole blanket of, uh, of how we, how we interact with each other. And what do you, I mean, like right now, Grand Theft Auto five has come out. What is it, Johnny? Five or six? Six. Yeah. Yeah. People are really upset that it is heavily black culture. I'm like, if you're upset about that, you probably haven't been to Miami because <laughs> that is my, I mean, like I do stand up oh, in Miami so and like, I can't sell a freaking ticket there. And I'm like, why would you want to come see me tell well-crafted multi-layered dick jokes when you can go play grand theft auto down on South South beach. Hey, it's funny. I saw the, the trailer for it yesterday. I was watching. I'm not a big video game person, but I did watch the trailer for it. And I saw it. I'm like, I, you know, listen, I, I, I come out of, you know, when I was young, my friend had a record label. I shot a lot of hip hop music videos. I shot some of Nipsey Hussle's original videos. I spent a ton of time with Nipsey. I mean, listen, I think like when, when you start to talk about this stuff, there, there's definitely has to be sensitivities um but i think if you want to have an intellectual conversation around it and have a nuanced conversation around it i think you know you have to i think you know listen the the idea that that this trial that's going on right now in in atlanta they are using actual lyrics from his songs as evidence in a courtroom okay and and I heard some of the the opening argument of his defense attorney, <laughs> and he's sort of saying, "Oh well, well, how do you know that he's speaking about this, or how do you know he's talking about this?" Right, Donald. And, real quick, can you tell yeah. us a little? Can you get into the case real quick before you start to break down? I'm yeah, not sure. familiar with what you're talking okay. about. Yeah. So there there's a RICO case going on right now. By the same prosecutor in Atlanta that is prosecuting Donald Trump under RICO. And that is about the um, what they call the YSL gang or Young Thug's record label. OK, and what's interesting about this story is what it revolves around is that the government and 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 Fonnie Willis, right, the 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 lead prosecutor is basically saying that YSL is not a record label. It's a street gang that's responsible for murder, for drug dealing, for extortion, et cetera, et cetera. And that young thug himself is not a global hip hop superstar. He's a crime boss. And, and it's, it's, it, it is right now the defining, I would say, court case about where hip hop music and the things you talk about, drill music, and the portrayal of you know what is going on it's this is that intersection of it right and and they're taking his music that he wrote now this is this is a very sort of interesting conversation he's basic what they're saying is is in his music he is writing about crimes that were committed and that it you know back in the in the 80s and the 90s it's no secret that drug money was used to fund various record labels. That's documented. That's not a secret. I'm not telling you anything that people don't already know. What's interesting about this is they're actually saying he's using the money, not the, it's the reverse. He's using the money from his massive global hip hop success oh, to fund a street gang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? 
and and just think about that construct okay it's not oh i need you know a hundred grand to start a record label from and and drug money is washed it's no different when the mafia washed their money through the music business right but what the prosecutors are saying in their opening statements is he used the hip hop money to fund a fucking street gang. And it's it's a pretty wild thing to think about. But I would encourage you to pay attention to some of the reporting around it because I find it fascinating and interesting. And listen, not for nothing, it's a model of what might happen in Donald Trump's RICO case. <laughs> it's the same prosecutors. Just think about that. Donald Trump, the former president and young thug, you know, hip hop superstar in the same courtroom under the same charges, Rico, which they've used traditionally for mafia bosses. Would, it's pretty would you hilarious? Would you say that that lands under the same category as Six Nines Rico case, where uh he kind of wasn't part of the gang, but he funded the gang, and then he ended up like snitching you know, them out. I, I think Six Nines case is a little bit different because I feel he was a pawn. It, that was used by mm -hmm. the people around him to actually gain money and extort him. He he was not he was not you know affiliated with the right individuals. I think in Thug's case, it's a little bit different because of his allegiances to um, certain you know members of street gangs. I will tell you this, and I find this last nugget I'll give you is. I'd say about a year before or a year and a half before this whole young thug trial went on, I was approached by a gang detective down in Atlanta. And he shared with me a PDF that had been created by the ATF, the DEA, the Atlanta Police Department, and I think even the Marshall, U.S. Marshals Task Force. And this PDF was basically the roadmap that you're now seeing at the trial of Young Thug. And what it really was, was the investigative work of gang cops in Atlanta for over the period of five years, putting the pieces of this puzzle together. So I was telling in my business, idiot television buyers Two years ago, this is going to be the biggest hip hop trial to happen since six nine or whatever. You should buy a TV show about this because I think this really defines law enforcement. And no one, no one, no one would listen to me, or they were too scared. And now I'm sure it's being reported on the New York Times, the Daily. Right? What was in that document that? Any it step had, by it, step had it, it basically was, you know, I don't know how much you've ever seen like internal law enforcement work product. Um, in this case, for lack of a better word, it was almost a children's book about what gangs were involved in, what murders and what shootings, what guns they had. And it was all pictures. It was literally like a picture book. And it and it identified this shooting happened here, this murder happened here, and this murder led to this retaliatory murder that then led to this retaliatory shooting. So it was a chronological timeline of the investigative work product that I guarantee you, as that trial progresses, you will see the testimony of those investigative officers refer to that document and what, and what was within it. Um, but it's an interesting document and second to it, I think it's an interesting trial that hasn't really gotten that much press, you know, um, so far, but you know, there's a lot going on in the fucking world today. So, um, that, that doesn't surprise me, you know? Yeah. It's crazy, dude. And we'll wrap it up here, but it's just crazy to me. Like what what hip-hop is and like how like it just keeps getting weirder and weirder and weirder and darker and darker and darker like you're now seeing you know and this is coming from a guy who loved 80s metal would shout at the devil and all that stuff but like the very dark 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 energy that's coming into hip-hop right now like satanism and all that stuff 
I mean, like Beyonce, Jay Z, all that stuff. It, 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 you know, my whole theory is that the black community is very powerful and they're trying to just shish kebab them so they can never focus on how special they truly are. And they're getting them to to uh, engage in the slow brow activity, the slow vibrational shit to destroy them and never really even give them a chance to to achieve what they're, they're so powerful that, that they, they could easily do. And it, it makes me very sad. That you know, th- th- what's pushed to the front is the baby, a giant guy in a diaper dancing around, and it's just like, what are we doing here? And, and like, how many people fall for it? You know, I see it in comedy now. It's like all the dumbest of comics get it like this giant push, and it's like this dumbing down of society that's been happening over decades. Do you have any thoughts on that as we wrap up? Yeah, man. I mean, listen, I think you know, in, in some respects the the music is a reflection i think of drug culture a lot of the drugs that now are inside of you know some of some of these areas in 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 cities you know um i know again if you want to look at chicago as a barometer of of drill music and and how that was followed in other cities it, it, it is sad, you know, um, because I think it's a larger reflection of the of the problems. And there, there's a level of nihilism, right, with the violence where kids in Chicago will kill over an Instagram post. You know, I've seen kids go in Chicago over a, 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 a seemingly dumb argument over a girl on TikTok or TikTok and 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 go spray up a neighborhood that that ends in the death of a two year old child, you know, um, and innocent people, and and I think it is it is sad, and you know, um, with with your podcast, you know, I think what's interesting is that you can have these conversations and sort of trace it back historically to what is going on, man, and and I appreciate you having me on. Um, and and giving me the platform to talk about the the biggie stuff and the dossier um because i think it's it's an important defining story right the biggie story i think because of who he is has many elements of it that you see in any of these other police corruption or um you know criminal justice stories it's just it happened to arguably a billion dollar superstar you know I mean, it's crazy. So, uh, Don, do me a favor one more time. Tell them where they could find you, Donald, and uh, uh, anything else you want to promote. Yeah, the dossier, the LAPD cover-up of the murder of Biggie is available wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want more information, you can go to www.criminalmindedmedia.com. I don't give out my – I don't really have Instagram or that stuff, so um, I, I won't give that out. All right, Don, thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. I know I did. Uh, very enlightening and very in-depth. Uh, guys, go to samtriple.com. Check out all my live dates. Chaostwins.com. Still go and join that. And uh, yeah, man, hope you guys enjoyed. We're going to stay here for a little while, have a little talk about uh, what just went on, and we're going to let Don go. Thank you, Don. Greatly appreciate it. Take care, brother. Thanks, guys. Let me know if you need anything, okay? Have a good right, holiday, all right? Happy Same holidays. to you. Same to you, man. Brother. That was, that was Take great. Care. Take it easy. All right. Uh, you know, usually we like to go uh, a little longer, so we'll just have a little fun conversation. Let me question, Sam. Is this going out uh, tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Uh, just wanted to make sure we mentioned the live show, too. Okay. So, yeah. Well, you know, we, and we mentioned that in the intro. <laughs> yeah, but in the outro, too. And the well, outro. Here we go. Yes, this Friday at noon. Did we agree on noon? Mm-hmm. Noon o'clock. Noon o'clock. Noon o'clock. Time, noon o'clock. Noon o'clock Pacific time. We will be doing the first ever conspiracy call in, playing your your voicemails show. We don't have a name for it yet. Tim Foil Hat Live, I think is what we settled on. Okay, we'll call it Tim Foil Hat Live. Uh, I mean, we Let's, did talk about it. 
go bro live on youtube we'll uh promote it everywhere well johnny the number uh, the number to call is 323 i got that la number 825-9010 323-825-9010 keep it brief please yes we're keep it brief excited. we're very excited uh now you so, don't have to call to be clear we should say it's a it's a voicemail inbox you leave a voice you yeah. can call anytime we're just going live friday at noon yep i'm with you dude Pacific. i'm with you yeah whoa hey sam i gotta ask you something if I sent you some drill music, would you even listen to it? It's not my thing. I don't know none of it, but I've heard it. Would you be interested in like how dark and like negative it is? Uh, I mean, like, Johnny, give Johnny a name. We'll see if we can listen to it. All right. Let me see if I can find it, like one of the mo po most popular ones. But it is I pretty dark. It's like literally they go kill someone and then the faster they make a song, the better. So they can literally talk about how. I mean, it's just, just crazy, right? I mean, snitching on yourself. <laughs> I don't get these kids, dude. I don't get them at all. Well, they, I don't get they, any of it. You know, when you're young, you don't believe consequences. You know, I, you don't believe in consequences. It's kind of a fantasy. I've said that forever, dude. Yeah. I've said, I got so much shit because one time I went on television. I taught, I mean, on Joe Rogan way back in the day. And I was like, you know, these shows are super dangerous. These movies like Steven Seagal movies, because the bad guys never get arrested ever. They just go on these killing sprees. And the only way they get stopped is Steven Seagal kills them off, but they, they never get arrested ever, ever. They just go, Hey dude, c yeah. commit a crime. No one's going to arrest you. The only people who don't get arrested are people who commit financial crimes at the highest levels. They never At get the highest level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. Any luck, Xavier Guerrero? I'm trying to find one where someone actually they actually killed someone for the song that they went to jail for. I know there is one, but I'm looking it up. But there's just like there's one called what's it, what's it called? What's the genre called again? Drill music. D R I L L. Drill, drill yeah, music. I got, yeah, drill. Okay. It's like Chief Keef and um it's just and they end up going to jail, so they don't really become too big because you end up in jail after you make the song. You get what I mean? It's like a one hit wonders type of thing. Oh, like, I don't like one, you. Said, this is from a, the BBC from a few years ago. It says drill video naming murder victims banned by YouTube. Yeah, I don't know. We want maybe we should we should get one that's like a drug thing, not like that's got murder victims in it. Probably. It's, uh, I just, I just, well, it's just so crazy to me because like, what are the implications of this? Like now, if you have a joke in your act, uh, that you say some crazy shit that can be used against you. Like, it's just like, this is super dangerous. That could be the whole thing. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think that's what they want. That's what they want. Yeah. You say some something. Precedence with this shit. This um, is nuts. This is nuts. But yeah, it's all Atlanta, YSL, Young Thug, all over music. I mean, 6 9 did did the same thing. Yeah, he got a Rico case. He was funding his not funding but they were using him as a pond which like you say so, two different things but the I cartel's been popular doing in that. the uk too in yeah. the united kingdom so but, i mean which is like that one kid who just went to jail in the uk and the guy in japan who just they commit crimes on their social media and everyone's and then they're like they're surprised when they get arrested what's the what's the dipshit's name from the daily show who used to host the daily show uh Trevor Noah. yeah he's got a video explaining drill rap too yeah, to people. I I, I love I'm, that they I'm act like he's got some it. inside scoop. It's like yeah, so hilarious. God, that guy was annoying. He so but, he ran that shit into the ground. I mean, he did. Then they gave him a Porsche, you know, just a, a brand new Porsche 911 Turbo. And when he brought it back, it, I mean, the the, the wheels were the tires were flat. You know, the, yeah. the, it was missing yeah. his hood. The yeah. windshield was smashed. I mean, he just went oh. to shit. So, Johnny, I'm looking on Twitter right now. Like, uh, like if you go to Gareth Reynolds, will you look this up, Johnny, real quick? You go oh. to Gareth Reynolds. It's Reynolds Gareth. He just um on he, on uh, Twitter X. Okay. Yeah. Damn, we are calling it X. There we go. It's gonna happen. I'm not calling it X. It's I'm gonna Twitter happen, Sam. Life. I gonna respect happen, people's Sam. pronouns, Sam. Uh, if they want to be called X, I call them X. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Respect. Uh, so, what am I looking for on Gareth? The hilarious Gareth Reynolds. The, uh, uh, whole, holy fuck, this is insane. Thing Adam that, Silver. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's yeah. 
can you play that real quick for everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Adam Silver is literally the worst. He also, I mean, it's just the weirdest looking person ever to yeah, walk. Yeah, I mean, like, tell me you're an alien without telling me you're an alien. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this to play. That X has a lot of problems getting videos to play. I've noticed. Yeah. Like, what is what is going on? Let me see if I can just click on here. And he does Stop look like him. an alien. Look at him, dude. He's so strange. He gets weirder looking by the day, too. As he ages, he's starting to kind of melt slowly. He's got that weird, weird lip thing going on. Bizarre. You I hear that? It's just not playing. Dude. If Trump wouldn't run, B Biden said he wouldn't run. Yeah, oh, dude, they're so <laughs> desperate. That's they're like so a Mexican desperate. standoff. That's funny. No offense, actually. Uh, but that's that is that is I I'm a fan but fine. Who cares, dude? Let me uh, let me let me, let me read, read what on, it says, Johnny. I'll pull it up on YouTube. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up on YouTube really quick. Just think. It's sure it's to be absolutely on ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh ba ba ba. What's the let me see what the question's about. Oh, okay. Oh, it's about Kissinger? Well, why yeah, would he like, why would he even like, ask him about that? No, Adam, dude, Adam, Adam Silver, Silver basically says he's the Kissinger, compares himself to Kissinger. Like, oh, I and mean, the quote is one of the great global diplomats. I mean, dude, I mean, hello, hello, uh, Vietnam would like to talk to you. Cambodia would like to talk to you right now. Like, I mean, this is absolutely insanity. Like these elites just have a different view of reality. It's so funny when I log out, the video plays immediately. Oh, uh, so curious. Well, well I don't All know right. if you guys know, but uh, Elon Musk doesn't like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I heard. Uh, that. Do you feel an obligation to be a part of like international relations? I mean, you said one country that I think we're not necessarily like the tightest with right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. You, are no. you a part of that? Do you get pulled into those types of conversations? I, I get pulled in, though, not always in a positive way <laughs> yeah, in terms yeah. of what we're doing. I, I, I will say, you know, I, I was reading a lot of those long obituaries around you know, Henry Kissinger's death, you know, at 100. And, I, you know, I where he was sort of an exemplar of one of the great global diplomats. And I want to say, I understand. I mean, this is going to be far about? afield, maybe, of your question. I, of course, believe we have to have a strong military. I'm a big believer in it at the same time. What? You know, call it soft power or call it diplomacy. I think through sport, yes. through culture, through art, yes. it brings connectivity uh, you together doing, with, dude? you know, McAfee, people of, you are of diverse way cultures out of and your backgrounds. You're wearing a tank Basketball top, dude. Sit down. Sports. Out of your I mean, you know, like, dude, you had the best you know, show as an ever. Athlete, even, I think what connects right you. Right now, everyone should be like, what are you talking about, Adam Silver? What are you talking about? And you'd immediately lose your show. Because they need the NBA for ratings. Say what but you will like, about Stern, but he would never have. He would never have. Said I'd be that. like, yeah, I don't get it. We're not getting into international yeah. diplomacy with yeah. a guy with a tank top on. Yeah, I mean, I'm he sorry. would never have said that. Stern. Yeah, and it's like I love Pat McAfee, but dude, I mean, like, st I mean, like, dude, it's you're just, a jock, bro. I mean, you're a jock. It's, like, that, it's just like you don't no, need to it, go it, there. It you are, you are, you are like you're already getting hammered now by people going. Wrong take, wrong take, wrong take. I love Maria Bamford. All right, guys. So uh, I just wanted to. So what do you guys think of that interview? Good. Fascinating. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, go ahead, Johnny. Well, you know, it's. uh, He dropped it, some bombs there for sure. Yeah, for sure. But it's it really makes me wonder if anything has changed. You know what I mean? It's it, I mean, I. Oh. I because are we still just in the same place, maybe a worse place uh, than we were in the nineties? You know, I it's just as violent. Uh, you know, we don't have that big East Coast West Coast feud like we used to. The violence is more in the communities now, which is even worse. Um, no, you're completely right, Johnny. Because uh, I mean, I don't dark. know if you remember, but remember when dark. the game and Fifty Cent were kind of beefing the G unit, yeah, 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 thing. Course, yeah. I honestly thought someone was gonna shoot kill someone but i think that they know that the money's not worth it because i sat there i was like why didn't 50 well, they hate each other they were making m albums mixtapes on mixtapes on how i hate 50 cent and i'm like they're gonna shoot each other but then when i thought about it later in the future i was like why they did it the money's not worth it yeah i think the 50 cent had had enough of it. being shot already oh yeah uh, yeah 
Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, once you get shot, and how you kinda, old is you fifty kinda now? Is he fifty? Is fifty fifty? Should uh, be around. He is forty eight years old. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, if you're still getting into gangbang fights at fifty years old, like, what are you doing? Oh, but I don't know if you follow him on on Instagram. He's a savage. When he ever he picks on someone, like he just went after Diddy. Right, right now with the allegations, he has a picture of Diddy without his pants on on his Instagram, saying, "And you don't think that's not gay?" And well, I just... mean, he also, I think he showed a picture of him and Meek Mill, like P Diddy and Meek Mill at an oh, like event, when... wearing the same exact outfit, and you're like, "Damn, bro!" Were you Damn. following him? Were you following him when he was going after uh, George Floyd, where he was telling him, "You can't read." Oh, dude, Fifty Cent's the best troller in the world. Uh, one of the best trollers. Oh, you're not George Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Uh, yeah, that. I yeah, was that like, guy. Damn, that was yeah, really yeah me too. I was about to say he's hardcore. I was going to find that right now. I was like, what? The- That's no. so funny. That's Mayweather, so yep. funny. You know. No, I mean oh. the guy was great at diss rap, so uh, you know it makes sense that he would be good at dissing people on Instagram. I guess. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, super yeah. Sad. But what did you? I mean, what do you think? I mean, they've just completely and utterly annihilated hip hop a- at every moment. It's either it's either thugs, fake yeah. thugs, or gay men. Yeah, I saw Lil Yachty on some panel the other day, and they this woman was asking him what he thought of hip hop, and he's like, "It's garbage. It, hip hop is dead right now." And she was dead. like, "Yeah, but what about all these people who are doing? Uh, you know, I, and he goes, "Name some right now. Name name some." And she goes, come on, people in the audience, we can tell you know there are plenty. No, he said, no, you name some. <laughs> right now, you said you could name some, so name some people who are doing really great stuff now, right now. What is P Diddy doing with his pants down? Like, That's on Fifty Cent's page. Just Yo, talking. What are you doing, dude? Like, what is that? It's a guy who might be a billionaire. Uh, <laughs> with it. Yeah, and a billionaire just putting go going. Yeah, yeah, you know it on other people's. Like, and Fifty Cent's just sitting there just on his page and it's just like they're still beefing it they still that's still in their blood to just talk shit yeah what are those what would he said all kinds of what would he just appear there was one thing he would say on every every track that he was in the background of oh what was it oh shit ah oh, damn i do you remember what it was no, 17 like, it's year just, old it's just Look at that. brutal i mean it's all coming out now it's all coming it's out crazy it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, they they've completely destroyed hip hop. So do you do you think they were going after Biggie, or do you think they were going? I mean, do you think they're going after Puffy, or you think that was just? I mean, I have no reason to doubt that guy. He seemed to have yeah, his shit together. I think yeah. they were. Get, I mean, isn't that crazy? <laughs> That yeah, the guy I mean, that's saying about this world would be gang banging they... and committing crimes follows the law and doesn't run the light. <laughs> Isn't that? But think about how much better the world would be if that if, if they had gotten their target, dude. One hot. I was just thinking, oh, dude, just imagine all the amazing music we would have right now if that guy had just blown that light. Yeah, uh, and we. I mean, we wouldn't have any of that garbage shit that Diddy promoted for the decades oh. after that. Oh, making a that, band. Yeah, he was. All, oh, all that God. awful shit. <laughs> I mean, he was. He was responsible for so many musical crimes. Worst crimes just probably being committed shit, in real life. Dude. Just gross people. Ah, uh, just gross. Just gross. yeah. It's interesting too. I drive through that. You know, anybody who lives in LA drives through that intersection a lot. Next to uh, you know, next to the auto museum there. Um, and it's it's the perfect place if you want to shoot somebody coming in. You know, it. I mean, it's just. Cause that it's slow, the traffic's slow there. That light has a long cycle. I mean, you could, that's how I feel like about that shooting at the comedy store. I was like, that was perfect. Cause you know how there's that one way in, one way out. It's hard to get it if you do it right. Uh well, you know, so interesting. I've said this before that Tiffany Haddish is credited with saving multiple people's lives that day by running the light every time she talked. <laughs> in in uh huh, the roast battle to the point that that the show ran over thirty minutes, so nobody went outside, and that poor guy that got popped, you know, had nobody there, and he just was bang bang pow. Well, and his only like, hope was Josh Nasser grabbing see, him, trying to be a could, hero. Sam, you could see it as she saved everybody, or 
she killed them because if there would have been people there, she could have got seen and someone could have been like, look, that's the guy that shot so-and-so. Mm, interesting. That's oh, I thought interesting... I told you that we won't stop. That's what he would just say that all the time. On I was trying to think about what we won't stop. <laughs> ain't going to stop. <laughs> so annoying. Nothing stopping. Ain't going to stop. Xavier, that should be you on the show. Just occasionally just be like, can't stop. Won't, won't stop. stop. Let's go. Let's go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, that's it. I thought it was a fun show. Guy dropped some great bombs, got some great names out. Want to run through the it. website real quick before we wrap up? Yeah. Uh, go Again, go check out samtriplee.com. Check out the dates real quick. Uh, we got a great comedy cast. We're only doing one show. I've decided not to do two. Only doing one. Uh, on the 12th, great lineup, nothing but murder. And then uh, El Monte, grab your tickets. 9 p.m. show, come on. Get them. Bangers. And then the 11th, we're uh, Xavier Guerrero, Eddie Bravo, myself, live at Hilarities. And then we're at the um, Pottstown, PA. We're doing uh, Soul Joes, uh, two shows that night as well. And then Pittsburgh, just maybe just me and Xavier Guerrero will go to that one. Eddie can't do it, but that's on a Sunday. We'll go. By to the that. way, some guy asked me which Sam Tripoli show to go to. Go to all of them. Go they're to all good. Them. He said, "Which show do you think would be the best one?" I said, "They're all be the. They're all the best one." Go to all of them, bro. Nothing but bangers, and I'm back in Batavia. So you want to do the uh, Dana the, because the my kid's birthday's right around the third. Dana doesn't want me to shoot my special on the uh, on the February third, so it might be the third week of February okay. now. You want to run through your uh, your things, you what? know the the website stuff. Okay, yeah, go, go to samtriplee dot com. The Paranoid American and Ooh. I still listen. The 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 Indiegogo campaign is done, but they have this thing now. If you want to still donate and help, you can. We're at, a, we're at a number right now that we can make an animation. We're working on it. We're banging. We're hanging. We're banging. Amazing. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, you can check out T-shirts as well. Go check out the T-shirts. Uh, it is very, dude, uh, conspiracies. Yeah. We go deep. Go down. We also have our Christmas shirts. Go down. Yes, look at that. The swarm is going. Where's the list? There we go. And then Yahweh or the highway, all Yahweh or the highway, dog. Let's go. Then we got snapbacks, dad hats, new Snap stuff. Snapback dad hats. Let's go on the side. Look what that says. Look at that. I need. Give me one of those. I will wear them. Um. Yeah. That's that. What else? What else is there? Um. What about Joe Staley Fitness? Oh. Okay, guys, go back. So I am in it to win it right now. Daddy's working out so hard, and I want to get into our affiliates right now. Uh, Wise Wolf, gold and silver. Guys, gold, silver, exploding right now. Exploding. If you'd listen to me, gone to Wise Wolf, you'd be sitting pretty on this gold, on this silver. Go That's check true. it out. Right? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hydrogen bound gas is fire for the children. Let's go, bro. And then our good friends at Harley Ray. Uh, just use Swarm 15. We got candles. We've got crystals. We've got everything. Get it. Get that good stuff right there. And then the last two things are a big part. Of, I mean, I use all these people. I use that. Go down. Go up. Go up. Go up. Come on. Uh, Chemical free body. I use Tim James products every day. It helps me. Uh, it's part of my health movement. I just did the golden hour and Crystal Lee is like, wow, you look really great. I go, yeah. What, 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 what's the golden hour? It sounds like golden That's shower. Crystal Lee, Crystal Lee, brand shop, Eric Griffin show did their Patreon. All they wanted me to do is talk uh, conspiracies. And um, you can't call yourself conspiracy daddy and not expect people to want I to know talk conspiracies. I know but I also want to do wacky stuff I want to be wacky guy. well call yourself wacky daddy then wacky come on come see wacky daddy 
Uh, so go uh, use Tim Fall Hat to get promo code on his supplements. I swear by them, okay, because I use them. And finally, want to give a shout out to my boy, Joel Staley. I am using Joel Staley. I'll show you this right now, guys. You think I'm lying? You think I'm dying here, bro? Let me show you this. Come on. Let me show you this. Real show quick. us. I'm Come trying, on. dude. I'll let you. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. But that's my tinfoil jack. Joel Staley gives me a December workout oh, schedule. And I'm hitting it, dude. I'm hitting it. And he'll work with you, dude. I'm telling you, you see results. I'm swole, bro. I went to jujitsu right. last night. I got a tap. Dude, I got a legit tap in my first advanced class. Woo! Really? That's cra- now I got tapped by a chick right after that. But I did get a tap, a legit tap. What'd no, you sorry, get? What, what 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 would you get? I did a crazy arm bar on it. I did a I did a my goal in life now, guys, is to name my own move. I want to create the triple E. What are you okay? thinking? Are you are you gonna do arm? Well, went, is that gonna be an I arm bar? Was I went up through his arm and then I cranked it like that so that I was on his elbow and I got him. The triple E's gotta be something a little bit like like a you know, something to do with the butt, I would say. Like, no, you do dude, yeah. no butt stuff yeah. in jiu-jitsu. Stop, Yeah, no, bro. dude, you got a reputation to bro. uphold, and it's got to no, be something on, a little bro, bit gross. a little We're bit not weird. gay shit into my jiu-jitsu. If not, Nothing gay God. about it, dude. Wrestling, if, they do that all the time. Finger in the yeah. bum, no harm done. Finger if in no, the bum, no harm done. If no butt, then a hump has got to be involved. A hump. Yeah. You got to... Yeah. Throw, what was, throwing your what fight was that dude, last year? What are you guys fight? doing? Are you guys trying to get me kicked out? What was that? A fight a couple years ago? Didn't like Floyd Mayweather hump somebody in the ring or something? Remember that a couple years ago? Uh, uh, I can't. I think it was I Floyd. Uh, really, he, he was fighting. Some... Gross. Hey or guys, just wanted you guys furious. to know that Mark just sent me uh, Donald's uh, talking points. So oh, thank you. <laughs> what a great job. <laughs> we love Mark. <laughs> really great. Thank you. Really. Uh, really yeah, I think it was Conor McGregor. Right? Didn't he hump somebody in the ring? Dinny hump hump hump. Um, so yeah, that's that. So uh I, I can't recommend Joel Staley again. Go to samtriple.com, click the banners, make it happen. Check out, listen, I am I am cranking out premium oh, content. Okay, cranking it out. Rockfin, I'm putting out three to four episodes a week. Some changes might be coming very soon, but things are rocking. I put oh, actually, I put out five. I put out uh Three Tim Fall hats, one zero, and one conspiracy social club. 50 bucks. Let me bang, bro. Let Amazing. me bang. And then all of my uh freak comedy podcasts. It's it's and then you listen to radio anytime you want. Sam Tripoli Radio. Bang bang pow. Anything else, guys? Check out the new broken Sam. We had a good time. Uh we a lot of funny stuff there. A lot of funny stuff because daddy is fire. All right. Anything, Xavier? Uh, we're actually giving out an Xbox for We Don't Smoke the Same for Christmas. Uh, what? For Alberta. Yep. And we're back on YouTube. We're monetized on YouTube back. I don't know what how happened. happened. Who, who'd you blow? I, someone blew someone. It wasn't me, though. But we're back on YouTube monetized. So go teeth, over there. Bro, all teeth. All teeth. All teeth. Well, no, it's good I- that you can compartmentalize like that, XG, and just you know <laughs> say that it wasn't you who did it. It was like you, you have like an alter ego or something. You, you give you all just that stuff snitched to- on your boy, bro. Yeah, it was you it was the gay guy on, on the boy. show. It was a we, gay guy. Uh, on the show. Yeah, Sam had a, on the new broken Sam. Sam had a little visit from the uh, the gay fairies at uh, <laughs> in West Hollywood, and they they left a little surprise in his I car. Think it's That's really all. Rude, so. Everything you just said right there, guys. Thank you for your support. And uh, enjoy these the, highlights. The gay porn my... fairy. Sorry, I meant to say Come on, that. Johnny. Enjoy these highlights <laughs> from my other shows. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Yeah, uh, Elon did go over uh, and get his hiney slapped by... Uh, oh, just so bad. By, uh, just, by BB. It was so sad to watch. But he got his balls back a couple of days later while sitting on panel uh, at some kind of deal book summit is what it's called. Uh, with uh, what's this guy's name from uh, CNBC or whatever? I can't remember. Like, is it, oh, what is that guy's name right there? I can't remember his damn name. Anyway, so uh, we know you know, dude. Elon have you tweeted seen all about the mix ups, uh, the mixes up of this. Can no, I? Sh- oh, okay. Send me some. But he he tweeted. You know, Elon tweeted about Murmurgate and uh, mm-hmm. and the uh, 
the Post and Disney stopped advertising on X. So at the beginning of this deal book summit with that guy right there, oh, what is his name? I can't remember. Uh. Anyway, this is, he asks him about it. And this is, uh, oh, I forgot. I got to do it over here. And this is, uh, this is Elon's response. Uh. And it's one of the best things I've ever seen. Uh, you played it in the studio the other day, and we were just, or I was pounding the desk in here. I You're love buying your stuff. Oh, I was that, that too. You hope, yeah. uh, don't advertise. You don't want this okay. leaving. We talked to Bob Iger I hope today. they stop. It's not going to play. You hope, uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? If, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. He's hey, pissed. Bob. If you're in the audience. He's waving at Bob Iger well, in the well, audience. let me ask you then. That's how I feel. Don't about, advertise. How do you think then about the economics of, of X? Andrew Ross Sorkin if, if, guy's if, finally came if part of the underlying model, at least today, and maybe it needs to shift, He's maybe the answer is it needs to shift away from advertising. Um, if, if you believe that this is the one part of your business where you will be beholden to those who uh, have this view... G what do you do? F Y. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too. <laughs> Still just telling them to fuck right? Himself. Like he's spelling it out. I think. Yes. No. No. I, I mean, Linda no, Yaccarino is right here, and she's uh, got to sell uh, advertising. Uh, absolutely. So, a, that's that CEO um, lady. No. No. Yeah, no she's totally. Right totally. So, so. No. No. Actually, what this, what this advertising take. boycott this is is is, uh, is, is going to do? It's, it's going to kill the company. And do you think that the company? Uh, but. And the whole world will know that those advertisers killed the company. And we will document it in great detail. But there are, those advertisers, I imagine, are going to say, they're going to say, we didn't kill the company. Oh, yeah? They're going to say... Tell it to, tell it to Earth. But they're going to say, that, they're going to say Elon, an that tech. you killed the company because you said these things and that they were inappropriate things and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform, right? Well, that's that's and, what and they're going to say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. Yeah, I agree with them. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this, then this a, goes back. Isn't that to interesting? Well, but, I mean, they go on like that for a while. But that's what do you think about that that technique that that he's doing? Like, okay, well, if that's what you want to do, then this is on your heads. This whole thing. And he even posted this tweet today. Did you see where he posted like how yeah. they give money to these other platforms? Yeah, but that not, are doing the exact same that thing. Are doing the exact same Israel's thing. getting their ass kicked on TikTok. I mean, just getting their ass kicked on Instagram. Getting their ass kicked. And now, now you're saying that X is okay. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so interesting. And I think it's just they're mad that he stole their toy. Now, I also make no illusions that he's like this guy, this uh, the greatest of all time. That, no, he's not. Yeah, and, no, you know, it's not. like he has, he has, there's some serious issues with this dude and what he represents. But at the end of the day, he's totally right. I want you to play this video real quick. And then I, I really got to go. All right, we'll do one story after that. Okay. Did you watch any of, I heard Ron DeSantis and uh, Gavin Newsom had a debate, but I haven't watched any. Yeah, I've watched some of Was it. Was it good? Well, I it? think DeSantis, uh, it's hard for DeSantis not to win. But, I mean, if I'm Gavin Newsom. Did he play what? I mean, did, did, did Newsom come off like you think he could run for Well, president? I mean, like, it, this is why I don't do debates with people. Because everyone came in with preconceived notions and they left with the same notions. Dude. But did you think as a no? A, I, a I thought Gavin you... Newsom sucked. I think he always sucks. He's got the worst energy. He's a slime bag. You don't think he would appeal to like women like in the South? That Maybe kind of thing? I, I mean, no, I'm but, just asking you. What do you like? I mean, like he's a good looking guy. Yeah. But like, dude, he worked get... for Bill Clinton, man. Yeah, but dude, <laughs> dude. Okay. I can't so play you're the ready, video. Let's there, go like, for the million. Okay, so like, should I? Is he gonna read this? You think? It's so funny, dude. Okay, so it's like a... It's, uh, who, who, who wants, wants to be a millionaire? Be a millionaire? And if says, Bob Iger was in the room with you right now, what would you say to him? Eat a bag of dicks? <laughs> Suck on my pee-pee? <laughs> Disney pee -pee. Plus is gay? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, um, I'd like to use one of my lifelines and phone a friend. Okay, who would you like to call? I'd like to call Bob Iger. <laughs> All right. Our friends at AT and T will get Bob Iger on the line, so and we'll see if he can help you. Hello. Hello, Bob. Yeah. 
Hi, Regis Philbin here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hi. We've got Elon Musk with us right now. He's won a half million dollars. Wow. And he's going for a million dollars. <laughs> and he needs your help to get there. Okay. So he's going to come on the line, read a question, four possible answers. One of them is the right answer. Elon, you've got 30 seconds. Starts right now. Hey, Bob. Hi. I don't really need your help. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to win the million dollars. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. He's won a million dollars! And what I see all over the place... Oh, dude, have you seen the video of the robot burn. shooting the truck? And now, a highlight from Cash Daddies. When do you think that we will, like, be back to, like, crypto cooking with gas? Because I think crypto has the exact same problem that it had before, which is there is no practical use for crypto right now. You, you'd say a couple places <coughs> take crypto for to be able to pay for stuff until I can go and buy groceries or gas or any of that shit with Shibu Inu or any of that fucking stuff, it's just going to be the same shit. Like the fact that they've made no, I, I mean, I've seen no growth in making crypto practical. You haven't I'm seen not. it. I see it on websites. Now I check out at websites a lot now and I see Coinbase as an option, which I should say I got. Uh, oh, Johnny, get I got, into I was, that dangerous man. I got an email about a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago from Coinbase asking me for some financial documents, mostly things related to where my coin comes from. It's very confusing, though, the, the way it was worded. It was like it was written through a translator or by like an Indian person, but with like a learning deficiency. And I uh, did my best to answer it and like provide screenshots and stuff. It's all just, you know, like mostly things that I buy, like Bitcoin that I've buy on their service and transfer it off. Or, and this is, you know, not a, not a, like a regular thing. It's like, it's like twice a month. We get a little ray from, uh, you know, from Rockfin that comes through there. And I, you know, I put it on, I would use their debit card to, to, uh, buy things in the real world. That's like the most efficient use of, crypto right now is to have a service that has a debit card uh gave it to them and then they sent me an email back a, a few weeks later like hey this is not sufficient but the email was very confusing like, the way it was worded again was very confusing they and they asked for a few things like again like more stuff related to where the coin comes from and again it's not like thousands of dollars we're talking about here it's not like huge amounts it's a very modest sum so we're talking uh and so I, I asked them for clarification, like, uh, you know, a, a few questions. I'm like, I'm not quite understanding what you're asking for. And then they sent me an email back a couple of days later. Hey, we're not going to tell you why, but you're now banned from Coinbase. It's so uh, crazy. Forever. Uh, really? get, you, you can get your money off. You're allowed to send send crypto off, but you can't buy anymore. And once you get your coin off, you're done. Uh, and then when I tried to get my coin off, they wouldn't let me do it. Couldn't do it. Tried for a couple of weeks. And every time I would ask support, they would send me back the same form letter telling me that they regret losing me as a customer and they can't tell me why I'm being kicked off, but it could have something to do with like government or uh, terms of service, number of things. Um, and then finally, when I complained on Reddit and Twitter at the same time, someone got back to me about this and said, we've lifted the restrictions on your account for three days for you to get the coin out, which is them admitting that they did restrict the coin on my account, that they were sue just going to keep them. it, I guess. Sue them. It's not enough money. I'd spend more in lawyer fees. Than I'm glad you're telling me this because coin coins of stock that in the last 30 days, it's gone from 88 to 140. It hit 133 or 134 on Friday, and I bought some puts on it. Um, and of course it went up seven points after I bought the puts, but I'm still not really worried. Uh, I'm telling you, I think that this stock could drop 10, 20, 30 points in a day because I'm not sold on it. Um, well, dude, Howie, I mean, when I posted that on Reddit, uh, it was just a ton of other people like, y'all do the same things happening to me. It sucks. Yeah. Coinbase. I've been in, I've been trying to get my coin back for like six months. Some people were saying, and, also, this is just a crazy side note. 
<clears throat> I've never seen more scam artists come out of the woodwork than when I posted about this on Twitter and Reddit. And it's all just these fake Twitter threads of people like, you know who was great at getting my coin back when I had this similar issue? It was old Benny Johnson over on Instagram. Oh, DM fuck Benny him. Johnson, dude. Yeah, dude. And, and they I'll would just have these Benny long threads Johnson. like, oh, he helped me too. He was great. That guy can Or even suck these it. fake, and you really have to be careful. They'll send you in your DMs from like an account that says like Coinbase support too or something. You know what I mean? And it'll have like a link that looks super official, like a button, you know? It's like, hey, click here and, and you can solve your problem, you know? And uh, dude, I, I'm, I'm talking about dozens of scam artists come out of the woodwork. They may, it must be profitable because they're everywhere. We, we go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. <laughs> That's some interdimensional <laughs> shit. <laughs> This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.